is Nyla. I was nine years old, living in Limerick Park during the LA riots. Me and my brother were going to school in Santa Monica, and when the verdict came in, my mom was working in Beverly Hills, and she's just like, I gotta get my kids. You know, I gotta find them, I gotta pick them up. Because we used to go swimming afterwards. And so she went to Santa Monica, picked me up first, because I was in elementary school, and didn't know, we couldn't find Johnny, and uh, apparently, he had gone after school into a, playing arcade games at a, a store nearby, and so we found him and were able to kind of, you know, head on home. And the, uh, I guess, the drive home was pretty crazy. My mom didn't want to take any side streets. She had heard all this, you know, things were happening in the news, and so the drive home, um, she decided to go stop off at the supermarket, and she said that the, the line was from the front all the way to the meat. Uh, department in the back of everybody thinking the same thing, like stock up, you know, for groceries because they knew what was going to come. And so after the supermarket, we decided to take the long way home, but the one street that we couldn't break was uh, Slauson. And Slauson was the, one of the worst hit streets that during that time. And so we got all the way over past La Tejera, and we're taking side streets, and we finally got to uh, Angel's Vista. So we're trying to cross and the most the most vivid memory is her telling us like unbuckle your seatbelt and get on the floor and there's a 7-Eleven that was right on the corner of Slauson that was just getting looted, crazy looted. Like people were just running out and bags of groceries and of course we're kind of peeking our heads up trying to see what was going on. and. Um, my brother, he's just like, Mom, pull over, pull over, you know, let's get some stuff, let's get some stuff. She's yelling at us, get, get your heads down, get your heads down. And um, yeah, and so we just kind of just went home. I mean, my house was up on the hills, if you can see up over there. And uh, we finally made it home. And we just went upstairs and looked at the view. because We had this crazy view of all of South Central. Um, in South LA and Lamert, and from our upstairs room. And we were just looking at all the fires of that night. But it was just me, my mom, and my brother, and we were, once we got home that night, um, you know, my dad is a reporter for the LA Times during that, that um, night, and so he ran out, went down to Florence and Normandy to get right in the middle of, of the thick of it, where it had started and initiated. And, um, we, it was the year of pagers, so you know we couldn't really get a hold of him. And so he's he's out and not answering his pages, and we we're kind of getting worried because as, as it got later and later, you know, we were hearing the news and we were looking outside and seeing all these you know fires starting. Finally, he comes home later that night, blood co covered all over him, and you know, kind of just in the mindset of that reporter. You know, just I got a great story and I just want to get it all out. Um, and later we found out what that story really kind of was. And he had an intense day himself. It was just very memorable for me seeing him come home with blood on his shirt. Um, he had, you know, witnessed someone getting basically a brick thrown through their window. And he took that lady, put her in his car, drove her to the hospital. And she didn't really speak that much English, but at the hospital, he said, I just remember him telling me later that looking at the hospital, there was everybody who was disrupted by their day. You know, like police, uh, post office people, people delivering mail, you know, that were just kind of caught up in the, in the mix of it. So that was kind of interesting. It's just, it just kind of, the world kind of stood still and everything kind of just got wrapped up in it. Well, first, let me, let me just tell you, my dad is, is, you know, he is definitely the type growing up that will make us experience, you know, just, you know, our culture in, in every way possible. He wanted us to, um, you know, I think he, he, the Million Man March was, was there. He, he grabbed my brother and they went and, and, and marched together. Um, so something like this, it was unavoidable, and he got us early. He, got, he woke us up early in the morning, and you know, packed us in a car, and and we're driving around 
the neighborhood and seeing just basically the destruction of what had happened. And I just remember, I mean, I was nine at the time, so I just remember being too tired and annoyed and wanting to go home and back to my bed. Because <laughs> we had to wake up at six o'clock in the morning, six or seven o'clock in the morning, really early, before the riots even would start up again for the very next day. So he took pictures of that um, moment. <laughs> Okay. So it may look like I'm um, a little disgusted, which I, I probably am, but for the most part I think I just didn't wanna didn't wanna be awake at that time. <laughs> it's pretty crazy though.